among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Testing, testing, one, two, three. A few words, a few words. Says. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, Good morning to and to all the of our Holy Spirit. And listeners. Today, the 25th of May, 2016, oh my Jesus, we are witnessing and we are, we are present here save us from the fire for what will be an indelible mark made on not just the Catholic community, but all persons who have known and have loved our people, dearly beloved Bishop, Father, Most Reverend Vincent Darius, O.P. My name is Ruthina Victor, and with me I have two stalwarts in the area of media and broadcasting, two friends who have come to know, and they will introduce themselves as we go on. We are right here in location at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in St. George's in Grenada and we'd like to greet all of you who join us on the World Wide Web, those of you who are linking with us on the video link. We are coming through a GIS, that's www.govgrenada.gd. We are coming through GBN TV Grenada and through Good News Catholic Radio Grenada and of course on our EWTN channel. This is a moment, a very solemn moment and it will continue to be so for us Catholics. We cherish the body. John Paul II spoke of the theology of the body and today as we witness this very solemn Christian Mass, Mass of Christian burial of our dear Bishop. We want to extend our very deepest sympathies to his immediate family and to our entire Catholic community and all our brothers and sisters in the Universal Church. So I invite our two other commentators, that's Jerry Romain and Lou Smith, and they will introduce themselves to you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, like you, I'm honored to be participating in sharing the history and whatever else it is of our late bishop. Now, there is something 
Um, specifically, I'm concerned, the bishop is concerned. You know, I was here when he was consecrated bishop. And in this very place in the church, I participated in the broadcast of the event. And that's when he was coming in. And now he's going out. And here I am again at this particular place. So I suppose it is a matter of reminding us that we come to earth for a little while and we'll be leaving for another while. So the, the essence of the whole thing in life is to live a good life, be prepared for the day when the Master will call us. Brother Lou? Thank you very much, Arian Rapina. Good morning to you wherever you may be uh, following this broadcast. Um, and I too am happy to be sharing uh, in this, uh, on this occasion. Uh, it's the first time I'm doing a broadcast the funeral um, where the deceased is a member of the church. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to be, uh, to be part of the team. We're speaking to you directly from the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. And um, it reminds me that um, in the beginning, when the church wasn't as large as it is now, uh, it was known as the Church of St. Patrick. And I think that in 1956, when uh, the Roman Catholic Church was in the largest diocese, the diocese of St. George's in Grenada, that uh, Bishop Patrick Webster the last uh, Rome, the Vatican, to have the name changed. And bearing in mind that Grenada was known as Conception Island, uh, the, the, the term was used. Uh, when uh, we have the cathedral, as we have the cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. So I, I know you'll stay with us for the entire broadcast. The actual mass of Christian burial is scheduled to start at 10 o'clock, but uh, we'll be talking to you as we go along at the moment. The congregation saying that the rosary. Athena? Yes, and the rosary is led by the missionaries of Charity Sisters, Mother Teresa Sisters, who have been working here. The church is a missionary church, and we can recognize so many religious congregations that have served this, this diocese over the years. And we do have and have to recognize the presence of the Order of Preachers. And I know um, you, Jerry, is a, a lay member, a lay Dominican, and uh, the spirituality of the Dominican, I guess, is very central um, in your life, and you're privileged to be uh, um, a lay Dominican. And for me, from St. Dominic's, we have always been served by the uh, Dominicans, really, for a long time, until the change with the diocesan priests. So for St. Dominic's, where my home parish is very special to me, and this moment is an extremely special moment. In fact, I'm very privileged to have been asked to be part of this team uh, to broadcast on this very historic, um, momentous, solemn, we can find so many words to describe this moment that we are celebrating as a church. So as a lay Dominican, I do you have an understanding of the spirituality and so was our dear uh, Bishop Vincent Davis. Talking about the St. Dominic's Church, as history is shown, it was um, designed in the, um, the supervision of um, Bishop Justin Field, Father Field, as it was at the time. And uh, he was a builder and built the church in St. Dominic. And there was one in Koshu, and um, I think he participated in the remodeling and reconstruction of churches, or the church in Gore was also built by him. Yeah, the, the Dominicans have been here for a number of years, and um, it's unfortunate that we do not have as many of them as, you know, as we would like. There is a shortage of priests all over the world, you know that. Um, recently, we had some of the uh, colleagues from, from Nigeria, Dominicans as well, and we still have some of them, really. But um, the, the beginning, the beginning of the life of, um, as, as, as I remember it, the Dominicans had a major role to play in the, I'm sorry, a little, 
intervention, really man. Yeah, the Dominicans are very active. They still do play a role. And um, we look forward to an increase. If this is, if this is likely, you know. Um, as we, when we came in this morning, and I'm sure it was closed, you know. It was very moving for me, and everybody was there in a very solemn, prayerful, deep, reflective mood. And we have been privileged to be at St. Um, Martin the Poor's Church in Koshi. And I'm telling you that there's a scripture that says, as we look on at him, one who has suffered greatly, it comes very strongly that one who suffers loves deeply. Because love and suffering are inseparable. And we know our bishop, as we looked at him, and many secret thoughts in our heart, I guess, that would have been revealed. And we would have this memory for a long time. For he walked among us, very simple, unassuming, very humble. Even the, his family spoke so very deeply but so profound on the type of person that he has been and continues to be to them. And I was very touched by the closeness of the family and their love and that, that community spirit that existed. So, I really was uh, saying a while ago talking of St. Dominic's, uh, St. Dominic's incidentally happened to be at my parish church at one time, for a few years, when I lived in St. David, Padmata, to be inside. Um, well, then I moved to the spaces at one time, Grand Dance began, uh, my parish, but now I live in terms of the cathedral. And we we're talking, uh, uh, Jerry was talking about the construction. But we could just give a little insight into the building from which we, we are broadcasting right now, from which we speak. The, the Catholic Church uh, was first built, I'm told, on the present site of the St. George's Anglican Church. That's interesting. And after the Julian Fedor rebellion, the English administration confiscated the lands and the churches that had been given to the Catholic Church and handed them over to the Anglican Church. While Anglicans celebrated Mass in what was the Catholic Church, while the Catholic priests and followers worshipped in the rectory beside the church. There was a great deal of hostility between the two uh, communities, or communities I would say, and the government began to fear an outbreak of violence. Eventually the government encouraged, or some say acquired, others say gave a plot of land high on Church Street, bordering over a road to the Catholic to build the church. It was there that the church of St. James was built. Probably in the early 1800s, um, because of the, 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 the tower of the Catholic, of the cathedral, uh, there's a stone which marks 1818. I don't know how many people have recognized that. When you come up to St. John Street, you look directly at the tower, you see the 1818 written there. The tower was much lower than it's, it is now. The church itself was much smaller than the present church. So the proper name of the church was the Church of St. James. I think I said St. Patrick earlier on, Mike, or correctly, Church of St. James. But because Grenada was known as Conception Island, it, uh, and when the Grenada became a diocese in 1956, Bishop Patrick Webster, the second bishop of the diocese, applied to Rome to change the name of the cathedral to the Immaculate Conception River Grade. The next major change to the structure was the extension to what is now St. Anthony's Chapel or Lady's Chapel on the left side as you enter the cathedral. In 1910, the church had um, steel glass windows. Uh, they're not there anymore, those that we're talking about, because they're all damaged or destroyed, not just damaged, but destroyed by Oregon Ivan. And one of them depicted the presentation of the chapel or rosary by Our Lady to St. Dominic. The other depicted St. Louis preaching to the Aboriginal Indians uh, using the crucifix. They were destroyed by Hurricane Ivan, I guess. Uh, you know, another thing that is missing from the church, and again, we blame it on Hurricane Ivan, is the organ. The organ, it's uh, destroyed by Hurricane Ivan. It was built, I'm told, in England in the 1890s. It was said to be one of the finest organs in the region. Sometime in the late 60s, early 70s, 
Uh, that present um, blessed sacrament chapel was built by Bishop Peel. And uh, that's just a short history on the Catholic Church itself. During, later on, the program will be able to maybe you know, we can talk about the tower. But it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, I, I recall after Hurricane Ivan, in the morning after Hurricane Ivan, I said, but no, we didn't look at the cathedral. And so, oh, everything's gone, the, the river and so forth. But people didn't normally go to churches as shelter. And there we had the church uh, destroyed, but the tower still there, still seems as intended, guarding the city of St. George. And so did the crucifix oh, so at the high altar. Yeah. That was very significant, yeah. You know, the cross stood there, <laughs> you know. And we also need to let uh, our viewers know that today has been declared a day of mourning for all our Catholic schools and um, so we are recognizing this day the 25th of May as a day of mourning and this of course had to be declared in collaboration with the Ministry of Education yes. and um, the Catholic Education Board of Management uh, uh, who work really closely with the Ministry. Um, we do have representatives from our various schools here too. Um, we know we have 22 um, primary schools and three preschools as Catholic schools and six secondary schools. The most recent has been J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School of which uh, the late Bishop Vincent Darius has been the patron and he's worked really uh, feverishly to ensure that that school uh, remain with the ethos of um, the Catholic uh, identity as we strive to do in all of our schools. Uh, we need to know that um, the bishop is very passionate about regaining our Catholic schools and the Catholic identity. So we need to continue that legacy um, um, of the faith. Oh, yes. Right now we have the Sister of Missionaries of Charity leading the congregation in the praying of the Holy Rosary. And uh, as Catholics, we believe in praying for the repose of the soul of the faithful departed. This is one thing that is very special to us and it is encouraged that we should, it's a holy and wholesome thought to pray for the dead. God, they may be used from us. God, they may be used from us. I think it was St. Ambrose who said this. Yes. One. You can also find it in Second Maccabees. Yes. Yeah? And um, this um, Cardinal Raymond Burke had this to say, he said, praying for the dead is an integral part of our Christian life. It is one of the spiritual works of mercy, and, and we are celebrating this year the Jubilee of Mercy. And our prayer for the dead both honors their memory and expresses our faithful love as we assist them to be purified of any temporal punishment due to sin and to reach their final destiny and lasting home with God. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which guides us, as we believe in the majesty of the Church, and instructs us about the importance of praying for the dead. From the beginning, the Church has honored the memory of the dead and offered prayers and suffrage for them. Above all, the Eucharistic sacrifice of the Mass, which will be celebrated shortly, so that, purified, they may attain the beatific vision of God. The Church also commends almsgiving and works of penance um, on behalf of the dead. And we have been doing this for Bishop, as we know. Um, the Lord took him to, his, uh, to himself on the 26th of April, in the morning hours, you know, while the world slept. And um, it was really touching when we got that news that Bishop, and from speaking with the sisters, they said, um, Rosie and uh, Rita, uh, both of the sisters were at his bedside, and that he went in peace. And they were very happy that he just departed in peace. So, what we are doing here is what is encouraged, and that is our Christian charity towards our brothers and sisters, and more so for our bishop. So, we continue to pray.
for me. So you know, there was a, a very big celebration at um, St. Matthew's yes. in New York, where he had preached. Oh yes. 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 Very touching. And also, he was brought to Kariku. I think the brothers and sisters of Kariku and Peter Martinique was were very, very happy to have had this happy. You know, to pay the last respects to um, Most Reverend uh, Bishop Vincent Harris. And uh, at Kosho, his home parish, he was brought also to the Dominican brothers on Monday so that his brothers can pray for him. And then he was lying in state here yesterday again. So everybody would have had this opportunity yeah. to really pay their last respects and today culminates in a sense um, all that was happening in the holy sacrifice of the Mass which will be celebrated shortly. I thought it was in, uh, a good gesture having the body uh, in Kariku as well <coughs> because many times you see the uh, tends to be locked out of things. I'm not I'm speaking generally. So I thought it was uh, very good. And from what I've heard from Kaku, the, 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 um, the people, not only Roman Catholics, but uh, the, the population generally, appreciated the gesture of having the body in Kaku for, um, for a period of time. And I thought that was very really good yeah. indeed. Yeah. He, he, you know, and the, he was a light person. He, he, he was simple. Sometimes I wondered. It was too soft. <laughs> you know, but I guess he was a person who laid down the rules and knew people. His um, the the the, 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 farm, the members of the church would um, know what is expected of them. Right. I don't know. Right. I think we can say he modeled what Christ has asked, and even that reading, it would not be done today. But what would have been the reading for today? Spoke about you must not lord your authority over them or mm -hmm. make your authority felt. But you who lead, who lead must be a servant and must be simple. And Father Clifton Harris, um, the administrator, had this to say. He said, he never breathed down your throat. And everybody would have known him for that. Perhaps we probably, <laughs> he was so, as you said, so simple. Yeah. But yet, um, we can see now the purpose and the power of a simple, a humble man. I interviewed him on uh, more than one occasion and always found him so simple and easy going. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the last time I did was at Bishop's house over at, um, in the villa. And um, he, you know, I, I always admired that about him. How calm and gentle he was and always with something to tell you about. But it's not a matter of being serious, dead serious all the time. But there must be something which could bring a little giggle, a little laughter. Yes. You know. <laughs> And he was, he was holistic, you know. He, he was interested in what was taking place in the country, in the schools. He was not locked into a space, you know, but he was in touch even with the music world. <laughs> yeah, he, he was a very yeah, much a people's man. man. Yes. yes. We need to, as we look at his, at his body, we notice that Bishop has been buried with all the symbols of his office. Yes. We can recognize the pictorial cross, yeah that is um, worn by the Holy Father Cardinals and Bishop and derives from the Latin word pictus, meaning a breast. So that's where you can notice the pictorial cross. He also has the ring, a symbol of his authority. And from the research it says, you know, people kiss the ring of the Bishop or the Pope to say that we have accepted, we accepted holy, we accept holy, the church and what it teaches. We notice the, the mitre, that is the headdress, and under that he has a little cap, okay, which, which is worn, and we notice the staff right at the side, and every time he comes in to celebrate, he would have the staff, and the staff um, is the role of the bishop as the good shepherd, and the crook at the top is to pull back the stray sheep, you know? <laughs> always a sign of this shepherd and that's why I guess people had conquered him as really a good shepherd who was very non-judgmental and yeah. just allowed you to be yeah. you know he might speak to you after a while yes you know and you say look you said or did something such and such a time I want you to think about it again mm -hmm. well, he, he was not a walk over oh, yes. oh, yes. And you know, the question of praying for the dead, a number of, like, 
some of my friends was asking me, what's all this fuss about the bishop is gone, he's gone, kind of, while you pray for all the dead, you know? And I would say to them, okay, we say you ought to pray, because we were told in scriptures, it is a holy and holy and God to pray for the dead, and they may be used from their sins. You tell me now why we should not pray for the dead. Well, I have a whole time to... <laughs> and, you know, that type of thing. I believe that if you are opposed to a, 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 an issue, no problem. You must say why you are opposed to it, and you must present what, in your opinion, is the better way or the correct way. You know, but um, our, our, our folks... I think what you're saying also is um, encouraged. It says, prayer should be encouraged for all the dead, even though a person may have lived a most exemplary life. From all appearances, no one knows the soul of the departed and the temptations which he or she may have suffered in life. Often enough, we know from the lives of the saints, those who practice the greatest virtue also suffer the greatest temptations. And it is a grave injustice to the dead to say that they do not need our prayers. Rather, we should continue to express our love for the faithful departed by our prayers for their eternal rest. So I would love to know someone is praying for me. <laughs> yeah. And even those who have gone ahead are praying for us. Yes, yes. Because the church believes in the communion of saints. Oh, yes. There is no um, like end. It's just a passage yeah. to what we have been living here, hoping for. You know? Now that's one of the things that um, we as Catholics always have to defend. Is when you when, uh, accuse us of, uh, well not accuse, when they say we white pray for the dead. Um, also the question of purgatory uh, is also raised sometimes. So uh, I'm glad you, 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 you came up with that because it is, I'm, I'll be very honest with you, I have a difficulty defending it. Mm -hmm. I, what, what words do I choose? What, what do I say? Uh, you know, but like Jerry said, I would ask, therefore, well, you said we shouldn't be doing that. Why? But you can't tell me what should we be doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we leave it on that. Yes. Yeah. God is a giver of mercy, and we cannot limit God because of our limited mind. And even if we don't believe, that doesn't mean to say that is not true. Of course not. Yeah, um, I think present with us, uh, I have seen uh, the one of the Honorable Ministers, Yolan Bain Hosford, but I guess, Brother Lou, you're going to um, share with us on who are expected to be here. We have quite a number of um, persons here. Of course, his family, his sisters, Rita, um, Rosie, Olive, Jean, Jacinta, and Maria, and his brothers, that's Morris and Francis. Um, he came from a family of ten, and he's the only religious in the family, and the first whom God has called. You know that? Okay. This is just, you know. <coughs> and then we do expect quite a lot of um, religious are here. We do have his Dominican sisters, um, Antonia, David, who came from St. Lucia and others. And I'm sure, Le Lou, you can just let our viewers and listeners know, um, persons who will be here and are here for this Christian burial. Well, we already have the sisters of St. Joseph of Cluny, St. George's, and um, they include Sister Paul Andrew from St. Lucia, as you mentioned, as well as Evelyn Whiteman. Those are the Saint, uh, sisters of St. Joseph of Cluny, Granville, the missionaries of charity, at, uh, in St. George's and St. David, St. George and St. David, as well as Gary Crew, they are also here. And the very people have been doing tremendous work. We see them uh, every day. They place on, uh, on, on, on St. John Street. It's, um, it's always visited, uh, I think it's on a Thursday or Friday, when uh, bags of food stuff will be given out to the poor and the needy. the sisters of the South Mother, the Carmelite sisters, uh, the Dominican sisters, and the Holy Child of Jesus. The, uh, I've noticed them yet, but we also expect to have presentation of others. And the wives of deacons, of the deacons, Lady Green, Mrs. Johnson, Mrs. Daniel, Mrs. McMillan, and um, well, we're not too sure what Mrs. And, uh, 
uh, I think it's a mixed bar that we have, so we can listen to the voices of that mixed bar. Cardinal, I think, from the Caribbean, and we they are standing um, and praying for the repose of the body of the remains of Bishop. I think Bishop Jason Gordon is also here, who has been made Bishop of Bridgeton, Barbados, and they are now proceed sanctuary. We have 
mixed choir uh, from all the parishes throughout the diocese and it will be led by a very very accomplished musician Lauren Ramdani and we have many other persons who will be um, singing today. I think uh, Reagan Ned must, I, I noticed her uh, coming up on the screen a while ago. Yes. Uh, yeah, she too is involved in a lot of music. Uh, that's uh, her there right now. Yes. Uh, rocking her voice. Um, and I'm sure, she, I'm sure she is also assisting. Sure. At the moment, we mentioned earlier on that the um, uh, Minister Yonan Bain Hospital is here. We've also seen since then the arrival of the President of the Senate, uh, Chester Humphrey, and uh, also noticed the uh, former, uh, well, former Attorney General uh, Francis and Dr. Francis Alexis QC, who is also here. Representatives of the prison service are uh, also um, in, in the cathedral. Um, and uh, uh, as the time goes on, uh, the closer to 10 o'clock, we are now 25 minutes away, uh, quoting the Eastern Caribbean time now. Um, the, the a number of people, the, the officials, and of course the congregation will be led by Her Excellency, the Governor General, Dean Cecilia Bernard, and uh, the Prime Minister is also expected, Dr. the Right Honourable Keith Mitchell, um, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honourable uh, uh, Michael Pay is also expected as well. The entire uh, Parliament, both Houses of uh, the United Parliament, the House of Representatives, and the Senate, they're all expected to attend. Uh, we also expecting the U.S. Embassy Charge, uh, Stephen Farm, and um, a number of other people are expected to be with us. We're noticing now the uh, Scouts. Uh, Mr. Uh, Michael Pilbert has been associated with Scout Movements, I think served as Chief Scout Commissioner for a period of time. So I think he succeeded uh, now the late Leslie Pair, and they were paying their last respects there to um, the Bishop. Uh, perhaps, perhaps, we should add, perhaps we should add that the um, Bishop was also involved with the Scout yeah. Movement. Yeah, he yes. was. You know, sometimes I wonder uh, when you, you're a bishop uh, holding that office, or you get time to be, <laughs> you know, you manage that time. But it has to be good time management, I take it, to be able to, you know, not only serve in your congregation, serve in the problem, but also, um, you know, be interested in, in, in things like the scope movement, which will have not just Catholics, but non Catholics as well. The Commissioner of Police, St. James, is uh, this thing arriving. Uh, he's the uh, Acting Commissioner of Police. This is correct title, Acting Commissioner of Police, is there. One thing I've noticed, and probably you can tell me, I've noticed uh, that Senator Ray Roberts, who's uh, uh, seated there himself, a uh, uh, devout Catholic himself, I noticed the, the, the body is not the usual way. I mean, usually, I think the head faces the east. Mm -hmm. On this mm -hmm. occasion, I notice it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. The understanding I have is because the bishop occupies an office that teaches. Mm -hmm. So it's like he's teaching the congregation. You see, that's one of the, the main functions, to teach. So he is like looking on us, <laughs> continually teaching us in life and in death. You know, so that 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 for me was a revelation. Yes. And again, this is this is a first time for all of us witnessing being so near. You know, to a bishop. A lot of people when they come, they said, "Oh, is it so easy for you to speak with the bishop?" This doesn't happen in other places. And um, this this fact that we are here, I mean, it's really an honor. It's really an honor. So his and his um he has a coat of arms, as you know, all bishops have coat of arms. And this surprised me, I really didn't know that. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. yes, and bishop's coat of arms, he has different symbols representing various aspects. They said it's a distinctive mark of his office as a bishop. It has a hat and cords and twelve tassels placed around his shield. In colored reproductions, these are all in green. In addition, there is a cross behind the shield, and on it is written, Proclaim the Good News. Mm -hmm. So, he also has the mark of his Dominican order here, and a sign for Our Lady with the Miraculous Medal, and for the country with the hills and the green, 
and this, the, the marks here as a sign of the flag of Grenada. So they can design it and put their own special. Oh yes, yes. we expect you to. Yes, do it. Yes. Oh, um, no, we do have some others coming. Uh. Sister Maria Regina um, is in charge of well, the congregation of the Battle Hill Shrine. And it is true Bishop Darius that yes, that congregation um, is, uh, um, is here. They have been invited by Bishop Darius. In fact, we have the Sisters of the Sorrowful Mother, and they are now in charge of the um, St. Martin's Retreat Center, Mount St. Irvins. They have been given responsibility, accepted responsibility. So they are paying their last respects. The religious, and then we have some Dominican sisters who are here, yes. And we have Sister Brooke, and there's another sister. They have their special connection. I also know this sister Julie Peters, you know, from the congregation of the Sorrowful Mother, from, from Rose. So she knows, she knew Bishop Darius extremely well. So it's a solemn moment, and we should just enter into that space there as they pay their final respects. You know, I think it is a very impressive event, a meaningful event, which could have brought so many people together, representing so many different organizations, both religious and civil. You know, people have come out in their numbers, and I'm not talking only of today's event, but for the time the bishop came here, the bishop's body came here, you know, nearly everybody wanted to be part of the action, wanted to see, to hear, to know what was going on. I think that is a sign of the mark of the, the quality of that young bishop and the leadership he provided to our country and our diocese. Mm -hmm. So right now they have um, surrounded the coffin and are praying. That connection, I guess you would never know the depth mm -hmm. of that connection with the religious, you know. And it's the better part, you would say, he chose the better part. Even if he lived to 60 years, he would have done what God sent him here to do. Yes. And there's work for him to do as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just witnessed the arrival of um, Senator Steele, Senator Simon Steele, um, who leads government business in the Senate. And um, later on, I'm sure we got a shot to his left, is uh, Clement Tobias, who is a representative for St. George North, uh, St. George North East. St. George North East. Sometimes I could have problems with the Tobias Clement. Tobias Clement was seated next to um, Senator uh, Steele. And like I said, many of the open wall of the Parliament uh, would be here for this um, 
we have now so the many today. religious communities of brother priests from the various congregations. We have the deacons. We have the names of the deacon Lou, you may have the deacons. Then we have the Kiltigan fathers. We have see Father Sean. We have Father Michael Fanier who has served here and have come specifically for the funeral. In fact, he has a um, in charge of canon law, a very, um, very versed um, in that area. And we see the order of preachers dressed in their full mm -hmm. vestments today. Um, yes. Oh, we also see Father Valentine, who has been the cathedral administrator. He has traveled for the funeral here today. We have Father Harold Imamsha, who has served in this diocese. Right. He's the one who said he believed that Bishop had been called to the Ministry of Suffering in the latter part of his life. We see Father Clyde Harvey right there. And I've noticed another priest with uh, a stick. I don't know his name, but I guess he would have known the Bishop Vincent. And again, as we share this moment, Father Michael Opuku, who has been the the last priest ordained by Bishop Vince and Darius and they have all surrounded we have some Nigerian priests who have come in the last batch and we see um, our own Grenadian priest from um, St. John's at Gwav Father Elias you know, a very simple family and he's with um, that order with Father Morris, not the, the order that focuses on preaching. So they are now spending their moment and um, praying for the repose of the soul. Our dear Bishop, beloved Bishop Vincent Darius. Oh, yes. Yes. You couldn't help loving him. Yes. You couldn't. You know, when you, got, when you got to know him, it's made it easier, easy for you. <laughs> Very non-threatening. He's taught me a lot, you know, to oh, yeah, yeah. not be too pent up. <laughs> Simplified, you know, it's going to all work out. Among those, um, I was trying to get that list that you uh, mentioned, but I'm not going to really mind it again. But I can also say that uh, among those expected to attend this uh, Mass here this morning, uh, Bishop Friday of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Jebo de Bernardo, General Secretary of the Caribbean Conference of Churches, the Reverend Dr. Osbert James, is, uh, who will represent the Conference of Churches of Grenada, he's the current chairman. Uh, Bishop uh, Darius also served as uh, chairman of, um, of, that, of the GCC. Also, Archbishop Christian Blasco of the Anglican Church, um, Mrs. Valerie Ramon, also Mrs. Theresa Lord of the Caribbean Conference of Churches, are uh, some of the owners we expect to attend at this. Uh, Mass here with the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. We have two uh, um, orders or two sets of Dominicans. We have the English and the American. Yes. And um, I think Father Valentine and so on would have belonged to the other order. I think it's the American. And we also had Father Felix here who was also a Dominican. I'm sitting here and I'm saying this church is just awesome, yes. you know? <laughs> and it's not ordinary. We don't just do things. We don't make it up along the way. We have a very rich heritage coming from the early church fathers and all people who have spent their life, you wonder how Bishop was able to do all that he did. Their life was is steeped in prayer. And you might be surprised to know the fuel that prayer would give to your life. And you do things that you never thought you would be able to do. And I think um, if our life has to, whether we are lay people or religious, we are called to holiness. Of course. And we are called to live uh, a life of prayer. As, as wives, as mothers, as teachers, wherever we are. Dear Bishop, resting. Life is hard, you know. I it, it mean, it's like... Challenging. You can't take, uh, you can't take one without the other, you know? And especially when, you know, someone is close, someone you know very well, uh, someone who's been, you know, so generous, mm -hmm. gentle, and 
I mean, when I got the news that he had died, you know, it's a... No, not true. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you a story, because I, 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 I wrote the news that night, and I did a, what I would call a stand-up copy, because I did, no one knows what will happen by the morning morning, seeing that he had been taken to hospital and what have been, what have you not. And then I tuned in on the morning, the other news, and it was a completely different story. It had a ring. to the center in the morning, uh, she was able to confirm it, and therefore then, um, the sand of coffee fell down. And therefore we had the story in the morning. Interesting. Yeah. Lou, I think we should also recognize all those who have served as bishop, Lou and Jerry, um, in this diocese. I'm sure you'll be familiar. Uh, we were uh, Bishop uh, Justin Fields, 1957-1969, Bishop Patrick Webster, uh, 1917-1974, Bishop uh, Emeritus Sidney Charles, 1974-2002, to 2002, and uh, the fourth bishop, first local bishop, Bishop Vincent Darius, 2002-2016. I think one of the factors too, where uh, people who love him and respect him for what denomination he belonged to, was the fact that he was a local Yes, Hello, it means a lot. I don't, I don't think it's insulting to say a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he also was very open to ecumenism. Uh, he shared yeah. a very good relationship. In fact, the church has the Grenada Conference of Churches. Mm -hmm. As you know, that we are very much involved. And Bishop had been the chairman of that organization for a while. And always look for areas like Pope Francis to collaborate, you know, and to work on what is common to our faith rather than what divides us. Mm. You know? and I noticed a short of Stanford sermon came up a while ago there, and I think two on the bishop and uh, the sermon did get around very well. They were very close, very, very close. Um, and so, you know, this is one of the things I, I wish for at this moment. And I'm sure we have persons from other denominations who are here from the various um, religious um, well, well, denominations well, yes, yeah. present here. Mm. And we'd like to recognize them. And in fact, we need to recognize those who are viewing at the St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Montjolo. We have at the Blessed Sacrament Church in Grand Dance. You have uh, persons gathered there with Father Nolan. Um, we also have um, at Gorb, St. Peter's Gorb. So there are monitors in these uh, churches right. and they are with us. Uh, we also are being carried on online services, grenada.com slash links. Um, perhaps you can call if you're hearing us, call your family members and ask them to um, find a link and be one with us here. You can also view on gisgrenada.livestream, your GBN TV, um, and on our own Good News Catholic Radio 99.5 FM, and of course EWTN. Yes. Uh, we have been brought there. So all of you, there are persons who would have loved to be here, who are sick and uh, bedridden, but present and love of the church to you wherever you are listening to us at this time. Again, my name is Ruthina Victor and with me, Jerry Romain and Lou Smith. Lou Smith. We will be your commentators um, during this live um, broadcast of the Mass of Christian Burial for the late Reverend, um, Most Reverend Vincent Darius, O.P. and D.D. O.P. because of the order of preachers, his congregation, and D.D. he got an honorary doctorate, um, uh, meaning Doctor of Divinity. So, again, he has had many achievements, and this year the diocese celebrates 60 years as a diocese, and there are celebrations accompanying um, the various months. And also, we need to recognize that Bishop um, did. Um, we had a synod here, and it was really fueled by Bishop Vincent Darius. And there were some bullet points, some main areas that we have been, we have pledged to do. And it's under the area of stewardship and administration, youth and young adults. Um, these are some of the areas that we have pledged to 
uh, beef up the diocese from the vision. Uh, Bishop really was a visionary because when he called, especially he saw the need for deacons, he saw the church was we were not getting as many vocations. Um, he did invite brothers to the permanent diaconate. Yes. Right. And uh, 20, 2011, in January, um, six of the men have been ordained to the permanent diaconate. Right. And they are working really, really well. One of the, one of the things too that um, you know, we can look to it, uh, uh, particularly where the Bishop died of working with this morning, uh, Hurricane Ima, and when so many of the churches, the structure were destroyed, and um, I get the impression that he was for repairing the churches in the old parishes, and as because we have noticed, the cathedral was in all else to be restored. I guess at a huge cost as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> still outstanding cost and appeal goes out time and again. Yeah. And one of the beautiful things, the church allows the Anglicans to use here. Yes, of course. Other, you know, that's to show you the, um, what should I describe it as? The Christian Brotherhood? Yes. Things like that. Huh? You know, there's a, there is um, an event. Oh, oh there's one senior. Something with, with um, the bishop four years ago when the um, international diocese of the Dominicans were, had to meet. We were, there was a proposal that the Dominicans, after having served with their five year period and qualified, would be entitled to use OP. But you discuss it with your bishop and all that and so on and so on. But you ha there had to be a designation between the real, the real priest and the lay ones. So I went to Bishop Report it because he had his documents as well. And um, he, yes, he said, right, 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 right. Um, then he said to me, when you all go to the meeting, in the case of Grenada, please let them know that we cannot use OPL because in Grenada OPL means other people's labor. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to <laughs> so in the case of in the Caribbean is OP lay. Okay, okay. Just witnessing the arrival of the Prime Minister now right on the Mitchell. second um, service of this kind that we will be attending in a couple of days with um, the name to rest yesterday of um, Will and Dewsbury oh, yes, that's right. um, who represented the yes, St. Mark um, in the, 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 the House of Representatives. Witnessing in a while, you see it on the screen, the arrival of Her Excellency, the Governor General, Dame Cecile Lagrenard. Um, in the meantime, we have now we see you now just about entering the cathedral. Uh, since last we uh, mentioned uh, some of the other people are here, we've seen uh, the Minister of Youth, uh, Emily Pear, and the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs is also here. Um, Clarice Modest Kerman. You can see the Governor General there. Being escorted to the pew where she is sitting. Seems to put on some weight here, eh? Yes. One <laughs> since last I saw her. You know, each time I see people like the Governor General just done making the sign of the cross, it's one, it, it is the most common sign you see where football is concerned internationally. Yeah, right. Whenever the players, not all, but the great majority of them, 
they will always make Pardon the me. sign of the cross, touch the two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very Catholic, a lot of Catholic yeah. countries like Brazil oh, yeah. and Spain. Yeah, all those in South, Amer South Central yes. America and so forth. Well, we're here celebrating the life of um, Bishop Vincent Darius, who was appointed as the fourth bishop of the Diocese of St. George's in Grenada and ordained on the 2nd of October 2002. Bishop Vincent Darius was born in Crochu on the 6th of September 1955. He was educated at the St. Martin de Porres Roman Catholic Primary School, Crochu. Just Scheduled for 10 o'clock start, so we seem to be moving right on time. Uh, listeners, I we do have a celebrant who will be Archbishop the Apostolic Nuncio, His Excellency Nicola Gerasoli. The co celebrants, His Eminence Kelvin Cardinal E. Felix, Very Reverend Clifton C. Harris, OP, he is the diocesan administrator acting in the absence of a bishop and Most Reverend Robert Rivas, OP and DD. He's a Metropolitan Archbishop of Castries. And we have Most Reverend Sidney Charles, uh, Bishop Emeritus of St. George's, Archbishops and Bishops of the Antilles Episcopal Conference. We have the family and friends. I see Anne Marie Palmer, who has lost her father. Oh, mm -hmm. Palmer, she the head of the task force really and has done yeoman, yeoman service to the church so selfless in her giving so we now pause for a moment to enter into that space with the family I know Rosie is taking it very hard and as I said he's their brother we know, they know he's the bishop but he's their brother I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they'll miss him dearly because right. he was just the life of the party mm. as say. <laughs> made them laugh and you know just loved him just as he is so we pray eternal rest grant unto him O Lord and let the light shine upon him may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace Amen, Amen. yeah I was uh, commenting on the bishop himself uh, yes. said that he had gone to the St. Martin de Portis Roman Catholic Church the school sorry in Crochu um, he uh, also attended the Catholic primary school from Rose before entering the Dominican Order in 1978 at Mount St. Irvins. He entered the uh, Vitigate on the, uh, in 1979 at Holy Cross Priory in Raymond. Taking off the ring. They just removed the ring. Well, they from, okay. Yes, from his finger. The ring is a gift from the Holy Father. What becomes of that ring? I'm not even sure. If I'm not sure. Because the succeeding bishop will have his own ring. Yes, yes, because that's to fit his finger and I'm not sure what they'll do. I see the undertaker, that's uh, Otway Bailey, uh, mounting. I'm not sure if he was he's preparing to seems to be making a signal of some kind. Um, I guess they might pretty well be preparing to close the coffin. I don't think they'll have it open while the services are taking place. But we'll wait to see. What a solemn moment. Very. when they're celebrating the Holy Eucharist they take off the mitre and there's a name for that little cap on the head
which is known as the Zuketo. If you notice, it's uh, so they have removed the mitre from his head and rested it on his chest. Sugeto on his head and now they are covering his body. I see Rosie and Rita. Oh my gosh, sad. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Oh this is really, really hard to look at. They're going to cover. cover. Oh, this is so hard. Jesus. Parish, Grand Anse, Grenada. To the priests, religious brothers and sisters, and laymen and women of the diocese, on behalf of the whole of the Dominican province of England, I wish to give my condolence give you my condolences as you celebrate the funeral of Bishop Vincent today. I regret that I am unable to be with you in person, and I hope that these few words may be a token substitute. It was with great sadness we heard of the passing of Bishop Vincent, who was a son of the province of England. Bishop Vincent achieved so much in his work as a Dominican friar and as a pastor both to parishes of and then to the Diocese of Grenada, as well as in his work in promoting justice and peace. As the first Grenadian to become bishop, who was truly a son of your island, as well as a father to you all. The Master of the Order has also asked me to pass on his own condolences and the assurance of his prayers to the Dominican brothers in the Caribbean and to all the people of Grenada. We pray that God may now grant our brother Vincent to rest in peace. Yours in Christ and in St. Domini, the very Reverend Father Martin Guineri of the Order of Preachers, Prior Provincial. There, reading a message from the from the Dominican brothers in England, expressing their deepest condolences. We've noticed the closing of the coffin. This is really very hard, and the body has been brought down to the the entrance, in front of the baptismal font, where we have where Bishop has been received in the church from the womb of the church, the baptismal font where he has been made a member of the church and the body is now being covered with a special cloth according to the program for the mass you know we have bishop most Could you stand? Brett Miles there who will do the reception of the body at the entrance there in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be always with you. And the the body is now being sprinkled with water, reminding us of our baptism. In the waters of baptism, 
Bishop Vincent Darius died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him in eternal glory. The body of the bishop is received at the cathedral here. And For all of you who were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ, he says. In, in, her, in his baptism, Bishop Vincent Darius put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, he shall be clothed with glory. We notice the cloth being placed on the coffin as a Now have our entrance cool. song. Canticle of the Sing along to really enter into the celebration of God's love. Thank you. 
sanctuary. All of them took off the mitre, all the bishops took off the mitre. Simplicity, humility before God, bulbs before the altar, hands the terrible. Same as Lauren Ramdani conducting the choir, and everyone is singing. to all as we gather this morning for the Christian burial of Bishop Vincent Darius. We acknowledge the presence of Your Excellency Dame Cecilia Grenade, Governor General of Grenada, Honorable Dr. Keith Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada, His Excellency Archbishop Nikolai Goroselli, Apostolic Nuncio, his Eminence Cardinal Kelvin Felix, Archbishops and Bishops visiting from around the region, members of Parliament, members of the Diplomatic Corps, clergy, members visiting from the region, and clergy of the Diocese of St. George's in Grenada, our religious sisters and brothers, and of course the members of Bishop Vincent's family, brothers and sisters in Christ. And we acknowledge too the presence of our brothers and sisters who are listening and viewing on EWTN and through live streaming on the internet as well as other media houses. On behalf of the Diocese of St. George's in Grenada and the Catholic Church in general, we want to extend our deepest condolences to the Darius family. We welcome those who have traveled from abroad to be with us in this time of grief, to join us, the rest of the family, during this period. We acknowledge and uh, express at this time our sincere appreciation to all those who have been involved in the planning and organizing of all the funeral arrangements for our Bishop Vincent, both those here in Grenada and those in New York. Your efforts are greatly appreciated. Many thanks to all of you for turning out in your numbers here and during the last few days to say farewell to our beloved brother, Bishop. Vincent Darius. We will now have what is called the ceremony of the Paschal Candle, and this will be done by Most Reverend Bishop Emeritus Sidney Charles. We also want to recognize the presence of our brothers and sisters viewing at Norton's Hall at this evening. In life, Bishop Vincent Darius cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. Deacon Raphael Johnson, placing the symbol of the book of the gospel on the coffin of the late Bishop Vincent Darius. Father Michael Opuku. At ordination, the Bishop Vincent Darius received the chalice of salvation and faithfully celebrated the holy sacrifice of the Mass, may he now share in Christ's eternal banquet. And now Father Michael Opuku takes the chalice 
and places it on the coffin. The Lord spoke about the new wine. He will now taste the new wine of heaven. Brother Carl Haynes is the master of ceremonies and ensuring it's done according to the liturgical procedures. Bishop uh, Emeritus Sidney Charles is being brought now next to the coffin to do the ceremony of the Paschal Candle. As you know, the Paschal Candle represents Jesus Christ that is lit at the time of glorious Saturday, Easter Saturday night. He's the one that ordained um, Bishop Vincent Darius. This must be very hard for him. So we enter into this moment. Behold the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. As long as the day lasts, I must carry on the work of the one who sent me. The night will soon be here when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, we believe that Jesus is the Anointed One, the Son of God, He who is to come into the world. Our life is hidden now with Christ in God. When Christ, our life, appears, then we shall appear with Him in glory. If we can be alive with Christ, we believe that we are also to live with Him. He who raised up the Lord will raise up Bishop Darius and us, along with Jesus, and place us in his presence. Both in life and in death, we are the Lord's. We know that Christ, once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him. We know also that our own death is the beginning of our participation in the victory of Christ. We believe that God is faithful to his covenant. ceremony of the Paschal Candle led by Bishop Emeritus Sidney Charles and now Archbishop Nicola Gerasoli who is the opening prayer. We are gathered here today to commend to the Almighty and Merciful God the soul of our dear and beloved Bishop Vincent Darius. Pope Francis in his message of condolence to the Diocese of St. George expressed his gratitude for the life and the service of Bishop Darius to the people of God and the congregation for the evangelization of peoples referred to Bishop Vincent Darius as a dedicated pastor who faithfully served the church in Grenada since his ordination as a priest. This celebration is full of Christian hope the hope that one day we will meet all again in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. O God, in whom sinners find mercy and the saints find joy, we pray to you for our brother Bishop Vincent Darius, whose body we honor with Christian burial, that he may be delivered from the bonds of death. Admit him to the joyful company of your saints and raise him on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. the liturgy of the word. The word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path, and the word precedes the communion. So we listen to the word taken from Wisdom 3, 1 to 9, proclaimed by Sister Maureen Alexander, St. Joseph of Cluny, followed by the responsorial psalm, which will be sung by Ellis Ogilvy and David Hopkin. And the second reading. Book of Wisdom. 
The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation. But they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will be their blessing. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust him in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. And as the word is proclaimed, the people respond. It will be led by two cantors, Ellis Ogilvie and David Hopkin, on eagle's wings. So you would sing when you, the indication is given to you.
can be against us since God did not spare his own son but gave him up to benefit us all we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give could anyone accuse those that God has chosen when God acquits could anyone condemn could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead. And there, at God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted, or lacking food, or clothes, or being threatened, or even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph, by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death, nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of god made visible in christ jesus our lord the word of the lord and uh, the congregation we respond with the gospel acclamation we invite you to sing
I have glorified it and I'll glorify it be proclaimed by Deacon Carl Green, Jr. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Gospel is incense and it's very significant because that prayer rises to heaven. Incense was used throughout the early church and continues to be a great uh, sign in our church today as we listen to the gospel. Jesus told the disciples the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I solemnly assure you unless the grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies it produces much fruit. The man who loves his life loses it, while the man who hates his life in this world preserves it to life eternal. If anyone will serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there will my servant be. Anyone who serves me, the Father, will honor. My soul is troubled now. Yes, should I say, Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from the sky. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the homily will be privileged to hear um, Archbishop Robert Rivas, Metropolitan Archbishop, to the congregation of the Order of Preachers. He celebrated uh, and administered the Sacrament of Confirmation on Sunday here, and also celebrated as a celebrant at the Chrism Mass that was held here at the cathedral. So our bishop was unwell at that time. So I invite you to listen to this. It's going to be one of a difference. He's now making his way to the Ambo from where he will preach the homily to us. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, as an introduction to my reflection here today, I wrote a poem entitled The Death of a Bishop. And I have asked a young man Aquino, who is a teacher at the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary School, to come and read that poem for us. So you are listening to a homily. Aquino begins it now. Kino is a poet himself and has written very extensively 
uh, very deeply and he has been privileged to be asked by Archbishop Robert Rivas. In the early watches of the night, while our islands slept, the fourth bishop of St. George's in Grenada quietly passed away. The news was sad news. He didn't make it. I lay motionless in my bed. My voice was a whisper. May he rest in peace. I was still in a daze as if in a trance. The call came at 1.37 a.m. The mourning for the death of a bishop had begun. I began to pray. De profundis clamavi adite domini. Out of the depths I cried to you, O God. He was tried and tested, a man of pain and sorrow. He hid his aches from passers-by, but in friendship revealed the unbearable. He wept and made me weep. Deep was his sorrow and distress. Quietly, he offered his suffering for healing in the mystical body, the church he loved and cherished. As he began to make his journey home, he enjoyed the rapture of a contemplative, alone with the alone, with angels surrounding him, protecting and comforting him. Not, he spoke not a word. When death appeared on the horizon, he closed his eyes, not out of fear, but out of trust in God to save him. The appointed time had come. He was God's gift to us from a unique mold. Now, he smiles upon us with new vision, still shrewd and mysterious, a victorious conqueror of death. Crochu's pride, its icon and inspiration. Lux perpetua luceat eis. Let perpetual light shine upon him. Let me mourn the passing of a brother bishop. How swiftly he slipped away in tranquility and gentleness, immolated on the altar of suffering. No last words or feelings of, att of attachment, just memories of his hearty and joyful laughter. He died in the simplicity of a friar, having fought the good fight to the end, having finished the course. Now he wears his laurels in the bright and radiant light of glory. Let me weep for a son of Saint Dominic, a confer and a friend, for a man of the word who drank from the fountain of the word, for a brother with a charisma to preach, with prophetic zeal and apostolic fidelity. He was courageous and adventurous, a servant of the truth. In obedience and humility, he bore his cross, trusting in God, the crucible of suffering. Now gaze with me in sorrow and in grief. No words for comfort. His passing hurts. Grace and time will soothe the pain. There's healing over the grave. A good shepherd has gone home. Grenada has lost a son. A guardian of the deposit of faith, its first homebred Roman bishop, tossed on a wild sea of anguish and desolation. He proved his integrity in loyal, trustful worthiness with the strength to endure suffering in poverty of spirit and a noble disposition. A good bishop has gone home. Grenada mourns and heads bow low. The church has learned a lesson in the transforming power of love, the strength of prayer to console, the grace of understanding to free and let go. The death of a bishop leaves an empty sea, with only the mortal remains interred for lasting memory. Let the right of Christian burial bring comfort. It's time to let go. Brother Vincent, son of St. Dominic, servant of the church, requiescat in pace, rest in peace. Thank you.
you, Aquino. In spite of all the time you have had to mourn the passing of your bishop, today is a sad day for the church in Grenada. Today is a sad day for the family of Bishop Vincent Darius, as well as his Dominican brethren, the sisters and brothers of the Order of Preachers. It is a sad day for his friends, for the bishops of the Antilles Episcopal Conference, and indeed for this nation. The period of time between his death and his burial has been a unique experience as he made his pastoral visits from St. Matthew's Church in Brooklyn to Kariaku, Kuroshu, St. Paul's Roxboro, to the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in St. George's, and finally, today, to this funeral mass and entombment. He must be tired. <laughs> it's time to let him rest. Today, we shall not dwell on his achievements or successes. History will record those 14 years of a shepherd who was the first Grenadian to become a bishop and the second Caribbean-born Dominican in 500 years of evangelization to become a bishop. He was my novice. I preached at his Episcopal ordination and we were brothers in the Dominican order. Early in his episcopate, he faced the terror of Hurricane Ivan. The traumatic effects did not deter him from forging a road of recovery for the church in Grenada, while scars are still evident in the Grenadian landscape, this magnificently restored cathedral stands as a symbol of his faith and pastoral initiative in helping and inspiring the church to rise out of devastation to new hope. He loved his country, his family, and his people. He loved the church and his Dominican family. He loved to preach. The trauma of Ivan and his health challenges took their toll on his episcopate. As we reflect, we remember the words of scripture. These sufferings bring patience, and patience brings perseverance, and perseverance brings hope, and this hope is not deceptive. Romans 5, 3 to 5. 
the words from the Book of Wisdom, which we have listened to, remind us that we are born forever and to enjoy eternal life with God. Our hope is rich within with immortality. Our destiny is to be with God and to be happy with God forever. In death, life is changed, not ended. Bishop Vincent has given, was given the privilege to suffer and to share in the passion of Christ. In a real way, he lived the Paschal mystery, identifying with Christ in his passion, death, and resurrection, in his moments of anguish and desolation as he experienced suffering. In the passage from Wisdom, which we read, the sufferings of the just are not considered punishments, but a discipline, a correction, a testing of fidelity in which God recognizes those who are worthy of him. In light of this, Bishop Vincent Darius has passed the test. He has been proved worthy through faithful suffering. He is now in the hands of God, protected and loved for all eternity. Be Jared, be Jared, O.P., a Dominican of the English province, the same province as Bishop Darius once wrote. And life is eternal, and love is immortal, and death is only a horizon, and a horizon is nothing save the limit of our sight. The death of Bishop Vincent is a sober reminder to all of us that one day we too shall make our passage from this life to the next. There is need, therefore, to be aware of our destiny and to be pre prepared. Is it John's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 23 to 28, which was proclaimed by Deacon Glean, Jesus and insight into his approaching death, which can help us is come. Let us listen to his words. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this very reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. This episode resembles the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus embraces the hour. He embraces death. Unless a, a weakling falls on the ground and dies, 
it remains only a single grain but if it dies it yields a rich harvest John 12 24 Jesus is concluding prayer father glorify your name John 12 28 is essentially the same as the words in Gethsemane from Luke's Gospel 22 chapter 22 verse 43 father let your will be done not mine Jesus trusted his father with his life as he freely gave his life over to death someone asked me recently did Bishop Darius know he was dying in God's wisdom I am sure that when the hour came he knew and he was ready For the glory for your name, glory for your name, glory for your name forevermore, glory for your name. finished yet <laughs> I would now like to ask you the church in Grenada I would like to invite you in the context of the death of your bishop and shepherd to reflect on the way forward for the church the church in Grenada would do well to listen to the words of one of its poets, Sheila Caldera, as it looks to the future and the way ahead. She too is a woman who has known great trauma and suffering. These are her words. I don't sit and expect obstacles to go away, to go below. I get on with life and clear obstacles as I go. The road ahead is bright and not covered with night. Being myself, I'm a child of the light. And the poem is Child of Light from a collection of the poems of Sheila Caldera. How can the church find that bright road ahead for the children of light mentioned by Sheila Caldera? The church in Grenada must now let go of its fears and anxieties and take Sheila Caldera's advice and get on with life while clearing obstacles along the way. The church in Grenada cannot remain looking into the tomb. For where it is looking is where it will be. Its gaze must now be focused on new horizons which will compel it 
to move out and to move forward. The church in Grenada must be prepared to die to selfishness and mistakes to the task of building a new culture of love, unity, encouragement, and loyalty as a church of missionary disciples. Wouldn't it be wonderful for the Catholic community to invite other Christian communities to join it in praying for wisdom and the guidance of the Holy Spirit in the process of selecting and appointing a new bishop and shepherd for the Catholic Church in Grenada. I see here we have Bishop Friday who has come in from St. Vincent and we welcome you Bishop. And we have members of the Council of Churches here. Did you hear me? Don't wait for them to ask you. <laughs> Tell them you are on board with them. That's what we are all about. That's what the spirit of ecumenism is about. Let us support each other, and especially at this time, this is the church that needs your support. I am counting on you. The church in Grenada is counting on you. Death can be a horrible thing for those looking on. But to die in peace and in the hand of God is a grace and a blessing. In Easter week, Bishop Darius spoke twice to the Nuncio, the Pope's representative in our region, with a request to initiate a process for finding a solution for a way forward for the church in Grenada in light of his prolonged illness. This I had asked him to pray about. He was concerned about his health, but you know what? In the midst of all his pain and suffering, and he spoke to me when I spoke to him in Holy Week of excruciating pain. And honestly, the words in the poem, he wept and made me weep, is just as it happened in my conversation with him. And in the midst of all that pain and suffering, he was more concerned about the pastoral care of the church in Grenada than his own health and suffering. And that was his last official communication with our bishops' conference or the nunciature. Little did he know that death was so imminent, so close. This local church can imitate its deceased bishop by learning from him obedience and humility through self-sacrifice and suffering. The death of one bishop prepares the way for the coming of a new bishop and for a fresh time of hope for a local church. I suppose there's going to be a lot of speculation and there will be a lot of nuncios around and a lot of people with the information.
maybe you will be one of them giving information and you're probably going to have a good time but you know what this is not that kind of time this is a kind the, the kind of time that requires wisdom and prayer and discernment and solidarity not speculating and gossiping and dropping all kinds of names here and there let us be sober let us be sober and if you stumble if you stumble take the name you have and put the name in the hand of God and just leave it there you don't know what it means to be a bishop is a very, very serious call to service. My sisters and brothers, do not be afraid of the future. Be bold and courageous women and men of faith. For the church in Grenada, the future is full of hope and promise. Letting go means letting God take charge in every situation that you will face. As people of faith, learn to read the signs of the times. We cannot move forward either as a nation or as a church with our eyes closed or without a vision. A people without a vision perish. Faith helps us to penetrate doubts and darkness and to find the light. Be children of the light so that you could see where you are going and where you want to go. One of my dreams is that the death of your bishop will bear fruit in a flourishing of vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated life in this diocese. I place that intention in the hands of our Blessed Mother Mary, Mother of the Church. In looking ahead with hope, the entire church in Grenada must become a discerning church. No single leader, no matter how great, gifted, and strong he may be, has all the answers or can satisfy all our individual yearnings. To be church, we must live in communion with each other. Be united in the essentials and open to the Each person has a contribution to make in building communion and enhancing love, service, and unity in the church. A new leader and bishop will not come with a magic wand to solve all problems or turn everything he touches into gold. But if he finds a true spirit of conversion and a willingness to serve and collaborate among his people, you, the church, then the road ahead will be bright, as Sheila Caldera said. Only a bishop in love with the Lord can renew a diocese. Only Catholic Christians in love with the Lord can renew their parishes and their local church 
their diocese. Out of death comes life. Unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rest. John 12, 24 Today, we mourn and grieve as we say farewell to your bishop. But his life and death are significant for the implantation of the church in Grenada. Father, in your son and servant Vincent, glorify your name forever. Let me weep for a son of Saint Dominic, for a confrere and a friend, for a man of the world who drank from the fountain of the world, for a brother with a Chris with a charism to preach, with prophetic zeal and apostolic fidelity. He was courageous and adventurous, a servant of the truth. In obedience and humility, he bore his cross, trusting God in the crucible of suffering. Now, gaze with me. In sorrow and grief, no words for comfort. His passing hurts. Grace and time will soothe the pain. There's healing all the grave. A good shepherd has gone. Grenada has lost a son. A guardian of the deposit of faith. Its first swollen bred Roman bishop. Lux perpetua luceat eis. Let perpetual light shine upon him. A good bishop has gone home. Did you hear that? A good bishop has gone home. Grenada mourns and heads bow low. The church has learned a lesson in the transforming power of love, the strength of prayer to console, the grace of understanding to free and to let go. The death of a bishop leaves an empty sea. With only the mortal remains interred for lasting memory. Let the rite of Christian burial bring comfort. It's time to let him go. Brother Vincent, son of Saint Dominic, servant of the church, requiescat, requiescat, requiescat in pace, rest in peace. Will you say it with me? Rest in peace. Well, there we have the homily uh, delivered by His Grace, the Most Reverend Robert Rivas, OPDD. Um, I thought it was a very moving one. Like we started, it was very, uh, very unusual to begin with. Um,
the, the wish of the, of the late bishop was that he didn't want any sort of purification of things that he would have done. And like um, his grace said, history will um, record what he's the Father, there intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voice of those who trust in Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Your response is... Oh, Lord, Bishop Vincent Darius received the light of Christ, scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Our brother Bishop Vincent Darius was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Our brother, Bishop Vincent Darius, shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Bring him into your presence, where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. Let us pray to the Lord. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. Let us pray to the Lord. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly the sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Those who trusted in the Lord, now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Let us pray to the Lord. The family and friends of Bishop Vincent Darius seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Let us pray to the Lord. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Bishop Vincent Darius. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, the giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voice of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them the peace in the kingdom. We assist to Christ our Lord. Amen. We, uh, we were speaking about the, um, the while ago, the, the prayer of the faithful that was led by Deacon Anthony Joseph. And um, we prepare now the, well, the preparation of the gifts. But going back to the homily, um, I, I guess my other colleagues here may have points to that raise, but I like the point when he spoke of um, 
uh, inviting or seeking the guidance and looking to other churches. Uh, and he, he pointed specifically at the conference of churches in terms of being together with the Roman Catholic Church and, 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 and praying that, you know, in, he didn't see it that way, but I, I take it to mean that, that what the right choice would be made and that we'd have somebody to follow in the footsteps of the mission of St. Darius. Yeah, and we, at this time, we will offer our collection, as you said, during this uh, time. Generous because remember there's a big, huge date on the cathedral. Uh, hopefully people will give generously and invite you to join as we sing All Hail, the power of Jesus. Servers proceeding to the back of the church, the entrance, to receive and to usher those who will be bringing up the gifts. And it will be mainly the family members 
of the late Bishop Vincent Darius. I found it interesting uh, that the poem that um, was read at the start of the homily and uh, the interjection of Latin. Now I'm one of those, uh, happily, um, I did Latin at BBC in my very first year through at BBC. And I always found a great joy, a thrill, to the mouth and said in Latin. And this is where I tuned into EWGN regularly, most on a Sunday morning, from 9 o'clock to day, because that was Latin and English. And the reason why I have gone for that, because if you travel to a non-English speaking country, you are at a loss if you go to the service. I spent some time in Germany, for example, and when I just I can understand what's going on, because I didn't check you know, you didn't well, understand, but you could have followed it. Yeah, really, <laughs> probably, you know, all things, well, because they're all the same. Yeah, but in terms of well, going along with it, it's difficult. But I, I like the inclusion of Latin, and like I said, I, I always listen to tune into EWGN to get that Latin part. Sometimes my co-workers, they, they heard me at one time saying, uh, pardon off the peers and they want to know what I'm filming for. I said, I'm wondering if you have a father. <laughs> But if at, if at this time you are a broadcaster and those who listen to you are acquainted with and know these things, you have to prepare yourself. I mean, whether you believe or not is a different story. And this is the language of the church. You know, and the church does not have to change to please. We have to do it together. Now, so there's a song that is sung to Our Lady. As you know, Mary is the mother of the church, and uh, we entrust many things to her. She was the one who told Jesus the wine is running out, and she sees the condition of the diocese now with the, the seat of the bishop being there. And so she's interceding on our behalf, and she's a very integral part of our own salvation by saying yes to, to God and His will. And that's what she does. She says, do whatever He tells us. So we honor her as full of grace. Of course. Of course. Those, those who think otherwise are entitled to their thoughts. But it is strange how they're so anxious to find out why, Mary, why, 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 why. Too bad for them. No, I mean, it's part of our, 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 our church. It's part of the teachings. The scriptures say, imagine at the time of the wedding feast. She was there. When things were getting bad, she said, son, they have no wine. Matters of that nature. Um, generally speaking, I think we got to hope of a bit. So we are glad that you are able to join us on the various uh, um, streams of family and friends this week. I think we have Father Michael, Father Lawrence Ebo, who is in Dublin, and he said he might try to find some time to follow the Mass here. Who has served in Sacred Heart. At this time, our viewers and listeners, we prepare for the offertory, very significant. All of what Bishop Rivas, would have, Archbishop, would have preached, we unite all of these things, our pains, our sorrows, our dreams, our fears, our anxieties, in this moment representing the bread and wine, which will be transformed, giving us hope that our lives do, and our pains will be transformed, that the body of the bishop will be changed, it's not ended. You know, so all of that, this whole celebration, a great sign of hope. So we ask you to offer yourselves too, offer the church, offer that um, for the grace, for the selection of a new bishop to continue the work of God's kingdom. And we invite you to stand, those who are able to. Take my sufferings, O oh my Lord. Take my joy. Take my tears, take my love, take my memory, Lord, take my understanding, Lord, take my mind, take my freedom, take my will, take my talents, Lord, take my 
my weaknesses, O oh Lord. Take my secrets, take my sorrows, take my sins. Take me all that I am and make me empty of desire. For your love and grace are everything I need. has always played a very significant part in the life of the church it's the prayers rising up to God remember the angels and the saints and he moves now to incense the body as we said we treat the body with respect at every level from birth to death and we give it the dignity that because it's a temple of the Holy Spirit so you will be incense the congregation all the clergy first will be incensed and then the in congregation will be invited to stand now deacon Cecil St. Louis incenses the celebrant the papal nuncio Archbishop Nicola Gerasoli he too represents a sign of the holiness of the church to be purified as well like all of us on this journey and this pilgrimage of life he now goes to Incense. The celebrant himself is now the washing of the hands, uh, which you mentioned earlier on, that is you now being assisted by two female acolytes. That's 
to the tune of Lord when you came to the seashore. Yes, and he comes to the seashore now, seeking you and seeking me, inviting us to something greater, something deeper, something fuller. Will you say yes? Will I say yes? I say yes. And I hope we all will say yes for the accomplishment of God's kingdom among us here in this diocese. See, you think there is something in blue. The meaningfulness of these hymns is a prayer. It's a communication with the Holy Spirit, with God. And it is not just a song. You know, and these hymns are being played. You meditate, meditate on the meaningfulness of these things. You know what I mean? And associate yourself, your spirit, with this. At this time, the congregation has been incensed. We are a priestly people, a holy people, a people set apart to sing the praise of God and call to holiness. A very solemn moment. This is just awesome. The Holy Spirit is present, truly present here. That my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for the good and the good of all His holy church. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice which your departed servant and bishop, Vincent, while in the body offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon. We assist through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Archbishop will remove his... The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Him the hope of the blessed resurrection is down, that those saddened by certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, sing the hymn of your glory. As without end, we sing and we acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending now your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, I drink this cup. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember... Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with the diocesan administrator, Clifton, with me, your unworthy servant, all our brother bishops gathered here, and all the clergy. Remember your servant and Bishop Vincent Darius, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also other sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheres to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Dear brothers and sisters, we are praying now the most beautiful prayer we have. It's the most beautiful prayer of our Father because it's the only prayer that Jesus has taught us. Today we pray and we sing this prayer with a special intention that the kingdom of God may come. The kingdom of God where already our dear and beloved Bishop Vincent has entered and surely our merciful Father has welcomed him in his kingdom of peace. So with this intention, we sing and we pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. and the viewers at this time a sign of peace is offered with a handshake or a holy kiss. It's a, it's a sign of what the kingdom of God should be like where we love each other. This is the purpose of being Christian to love God above all else and our neighbors ourselves. That's where we see the evidence of our Christian life. As the church knows it's a sign, that's what we are striving to become, to be at peace with God and with each other. So we extend peace to you wherever you are gathered, at the Blessed Sacrament Church, at the St. Joseph's R.C. Church in Montelieu, at St. Peter's R.C. Church in Guam, at North Hall here. Peace be with you, all of you who are listening to us on online services, those who are getting us from wherever you are getting us. We extend the peace of Christ to you wherever you are. Those listening on GIS, those listening on EWTN and viewing, we extend the peace of Christ to you and I know you are extending it to us as well. I'm always very pleased to have EWTN involved and things like that. You know, the church comes alive when they're there, kind of, you know, meaningful, very, very meaningful. And to those who sponsor I want to say thank you, EWTN. Come a, come a little more often. Let me see that Mother Angelica is a very 
very, very um, strong people who oh, yes. in this year. Yes. And she started in a very simple and humble way and see what it has done. Right. So we right. too are called to put our two cents, uh, like the widow, but right. and see how it will blossom. Right, right. Yes, Lou? Uh, okay. Tell you what. Okay. Yes, uh, whenever we come to this particular part, there's always a, something that you enjoy. There's one part of the mass we are a little bit confined this morning, so we can't go around and meet many more people because I would go around and meet many more people. But we always find that interesting. And you know, there's a particular tune that I, I like, Peace. I love playing it. It reminds me of this particular tune. In commenting on what is taking place, we do not want to do all the talking. We want our listeners and viewers to be able to follow what is going on elsewhere. You know, um, sometimes my hymn is on, we can do a little talking, and that's fine, you know. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We heard the bell as a sign that the body and blood of Jesus Christ will be distributed to the faithful. All those who have prepared themselves for this moment to receive the Lord in their lives, in their heart, under the appearances of bread and wine. This is the food for the journey. This is the Panis Angelicus. This is the bread of heaven. This is Jesus coming to meet us humbling himself in this form of bread and so we invite you to have a spiritual communion those who are not here to have a spiritual communion to enter into this time as a communion hymn will be sung O bread of heaven
congregation uh, participating in the uh, in communion. The one of the not the most sacred part of mass we've uh, uh, been gone through uh, with the Eucharist, with the uh, consecration of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And the communion in the work of uh, every other word of now and all I have learned. Earlier, 
we try and remember that. But singleness being beautiful, and again, like I said, we chose what, how well we could perform. Yeah, that kind of together. togetherness. Yeah. You know, we were all and these are choir, these are members mm -hmm. coming from various choirs of various churches across the, right. the country. he lives. Bishop Darius was a man of great uh, variety in music and I know he would have appreciated this. I know one he loved was uh, May us pray. May your merciful kindness which we have implored, O oh Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant Bishop Vincent, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And now we come to the signs of farewell and the body of Bishop Vincent Darius will be incensed as a sign of respect for his remains then the friars and the sisters of the order of preachers would gather around the coffin to sing the Salve Regina. 
this will be followed by the prayer of commendation. Father Clifton Harris uh, ushers the people nuncio, the celebrant, who is accompanied by Bishop Marze and Bishop Kenneth Richards, Archbishop Kenneth Richards. Dear brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Bishop Vincentarius. May our farewell express our affection to him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day, we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. At this time, viewers and listeners, the friars and the sisters of the Order of Preachers are now joining the celebrant and the other Bishop Malze, Bishop Kenneth, Archbishop Kenneth Richards. I see Father Peter Clark and all the visiting priests, Father Ronald Holder, who is the prior of the Priory in St. Paul's, Our Lady of the Rosary, we see Sister Hope, what's your other sister's name in there, Dominican sister, I see Sister Hope, and there's another sister here with her as well, from the Dominican order, and we have Antonia from another Dominican sister, and they will now do the Salve Regina, very solemn moment now.
that was a sad day, Regina, and we just spoke about the Latin. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brother, Bishop Vincent Darius, in the sure and certain hope that together, with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessing which you bestowed upon Bishop Vincent Darius in this life. There are signs to us of your goodness and our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Vincent and help us remain to comfort to one another with the assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask, ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Saints of God, come to his help. Ask them to meet him, angels of God. Father Clifton Harris will lead us now. People, I will walk. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of I love the Lord, for he hears the cry of my appeal. They surround me, the snares of death with the anguish of the tomb. How gracious is the Lord and just. Our God has compassion. Turn back my soul to your rest, for the Lord has been good. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 116, 116. Dear brothers and sisters, let us go in the peace of Christ as we take the body of our beloved brother Bishop Vincent Darius to his place of rest. session now uh, to the place of um, committal. We will now process out where the body and one remain in church. The request uh, is that the um, congregation remain except for the Darius family who would um, accompany the, the the poor bearers were Father Ronald Holder, okay, Father Carl Ames, uh, Father Andrew Bangalore, along with Mr. Francis Dalias, Mr. Maurice Dalias, and uh, Mr. Paul Dalias. They had the uh, poor bearers as the uh, body of the late Bishop Vincent the Dalias is taken to the tomb.
please take me to the crypt, the place of committal, and there'll be a rite, very solemn and very sacred, the rite of committal, which will be led by um, at Cardinal Felix. Yeah, Cardinal Felix. His Eminence, Kelvin Cardinal Felix.
that has been paved to a great extent by Bishop Vincent Harris. He'll be talked about <laughs> all our lives. Oh, yes. You just cannot miss the invaluable contribution he has made. Because to you see, he lived a full life. Yes. He was a part of everything, everywhere. Yes. You know, and he handled the things in, in such a way. Very human person yes. he was. Yes. You know, it's a, uh, a big supporter of the Stephen uh, instrument. And I was glad that they included yes. the piece there uh, with David Peck Edwards is playing. Yes. Um, but I'm not too certain if Bishop Darius enjoyed Stephen music, but one way or the other, he had to contend with it. <laughs> because he had to interrupt with it. <laughs> right across it. <yes. laughs> he, loves, he loves rhythm. I remember one time he brought this tune for us at a radio station. He was very instrumental, very supportive with Good News Catholic Radio. And then he brought this, um, I can feel it. He started yeah. to dance in the studio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he had everybody cracking up, That's enjoying the, the dance too. That's the one he's human. Yes. <laughs> So viewers and listeners, again, um, we are here bringing you live coverage. And the final of, moments. Yes, mm -hmm. final moment. The committal, uh, the right of committal will commence <laughs> shortly by His Eminence Cardinal Kelvin, Kelvin Felix from St. Lucia. We are honored to have a cardinal here in the Caribbean. He's so much, so much involvement with um, his Holiness Pope Francis. And he, he's, a little, he's one again who seems to have get more and more people in places uh, involved in the church. Yes. Let us yes. pray to win what comes from yes. the Latin America. Oh God, uh, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, bless this grave and send your holy angels to watch over it. As we bury here the body of Bishop Vincent Darius, Welcome him into your presence, that he may rejoice in you with your sins forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Because God has chosen to call our brother Bishop Vincent Darius from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise him up his body on the last day. For our brother Bishop Vincent Darius, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death, and whoever lives and believes in me shall live forever. Our brother has washed, was washed in baptism, anointed with the Holy Spirit, and shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. Give him fellowship with your saints in glory, we pray to the Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place in the liturgy of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Bishop Vincent Darius. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the God of holiness and power, 
accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Vincent, Bishop Vincent Darius. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to do your will. As his faith united him to your people on earth, so may your mercy join him to the angels in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. as a church because we have no time given for grieving. It has to take the time it has to take and the journey it has to take. But the Lord accompanies us in all of these things and death is always a necessary part of that journey. And so in every aspect of our care and praying for the dead, we bring the dead to a reverent burial we profess our faith in Jesus Christ, everything we do, the Lord of earth and of heaven. So we pray that our celebration of the funeral mass here for the late Bishop Vincent Darius always express our firm faith and show hope in the resurrection of the body of the, on the last day. May our prayers for the dead assist him, our Bishop, on the final stage of his pilgrimage home to God the Father. And may we prepare ourselves each day for our own death, praying that it may be happy and bring us safely home. And I guess you spoke on behalf of all of us. Oh, yes, certainly. <laughs> and we thank you for that. That's his sister Rita there. Oh, okay. She was the one who was at his bedside, and every time he went to the States, she was there for him. Oh, she lives in New York. Thank you. 
of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need. A strength and a hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant into the Bishop Darius, O Lord. Amen. May he rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ending. As it is said there by the celebrant, the mass is ended. And what we are going to do is the way for Bishop Vincent Darius is the way to serve the Lord. I say the way because not the same Catholics can serve. It's the way in this temple was the way to serve the Lord and his fellowship.
church with life and the church is part of the church. So listeners and the viewers, those of you who are viewing us on online services with leader.com slash link, those of you viewing on the WWO, GOP, Pineda, GD, that's GIS, Pineda dot live stream, GBN TV, News Catholic Radio 99.5, and of course, the All the people have been given there as an officer. Oh, <laughs> 